September 14th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Isaiah chapters 44 and 45 from the Old Testament Now listen, Jacob, my servant, Israel, whom I have chosen. This is what the Lord, the one who made you, says, the one who formed you in the womb and helps you. Don't be afraid, my servant Jacob, Jeshurun, whom I have chosen, for I will pour water on the parched ground and cause streams to flow on the dry land. I will pour my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your children. They will sprout up like a tree in the grass, like poplars beside channels of water. One will say, I belong to the Lord, and another will use the name Jacob. One will write on his hand the Lord's and use the name Israel. This is what the Lord, Israel's king, says, their protector, the Lord who commands armies. I am the first and I am the last. There is no God but me who is like me. Let him make his claim. Let him announce it and explain it to me. Since I established an ancient people, let them announce future events. Don't panic. Don't be afraid. Did I not tell you beforehand and decree it? You are my witnesses. Is there any God but me? There is no other sheltering rock. I know of none. All who form idols are nothing. The things in which they delight are worthless. Their witnesses cannot see. They recognize nothing, so they are put to shame. Who forms a god and casts an idol that will prove worthless? Look, all his associates will be put to shame. The craftsmen are mere humans. Let them all assemble and take their stand. They will panic and be put to shame. A blacksmith works with his tool and forges metal over the coals. He forms it with hammers. He makes it with his strong arm. He gets hungry and loses his energy. He drinks no water and gets tired. A carpenter takes measurements. He marks out an outline of its form. He scrapes it with chisels and marks it with a compass. He patterns it after the human form like a well-built human being, and puts it in a shrine. He cuts down cedars and acquires a cypress or an oak. He gets trees from the forest. He plants a cedar and the rain makes it grow. A man uses it to make a fire. He takes some of it and warms himself. Yet he kindles a fire and bakes bread. Then he makes a god and worships it. He makes an idol and bows down to it. Half of it he burns in the fire. Over that half he cooks meat. He roasts a meal and fills himself. Yes, he warms himself and says, Ah, I am warm as I look at the fire. With the rest of it, he makes a god, his idol. He bows down to it and worships it. He prays to it, saying, Rescue me, for you are my god. They do not comprehend or understand, for their eyes are blind and cannot see. Their minds do not discern. No one thinks to himself, nor do they comprehend or understand and say to themselves, I burned half of it in the fire. Yes, I baked bread over the coals. I roasted meat and ate it. With the rest of it, should I make a disgusting idol? Should I bow down to dry wood? He feeds on ashes. His deceived mind misleads him. He cannot rescue himself, nor does he say, Is this not a false god I hold in my right hand? Remember these things, O Jacob. O Israel, for you are my servant. I formed you to be my servant, O Israel, I will not forget you. I remove the guilt of your rebellious deeds as if they were a cloud, the guilt of your sins as if they were a cloud. Come back to me, for I protect you. Shout for joy, O sky, for the Lord intervenes. Shout out, you subterranean regions of the earth. O mountains, give a joyful shout, you too, O forest and all your trees. For the Lord protects Jacob. He reveals his splendor through Israel. This is what the Lord your protector says, the one who formed you in the womb. I am the Lord who made everything, who alone stretched out the sky, who fashioned the earth all by myself, who frustrates the omens of the empty talkers and humiliates the omen readers, who overturns the counsel of the wise men who make their advice seem foolish, who fulfills the oracles of his prophetic servants, and brings to pass the announcements of his messengers, who says about Jerusalem, she will be inhabited, and about the towns of Judah, they will be rebuilt, her ruins I will raise up. Who says to the deep sea, be dry, I will dry up your sea currents. 
who commissioned Cyrus, the one I appointed as shepherd, to carry out all my wishes, and to decree concerning Jerusalem, she will be rebuilt, and concerning the temple, it will be reconstructed. This is what the Lord says to his chosen one, to Cyrus, whose right hand I hold in order to subdue nations before him and disarm kings to open doors before him so gates remain unclosed. I will go before you and level mountains. Bronze doors I will shatter and iron bars I will hack through. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stashed away in secret places, so you may recognize that I am the Lord, the one who calls you by name the God of Israel. For the sake of my servant Jacob, Israel, my chosen one, I call you by name and give you a title of respect even though you do not recognize me. I am the Lord. I have no peer. There is no God but me. I arm you for battle even though you do not recognize me. I do this so people will recognize from east to west that there is no God but me. I am the Lord. I have no peer. I am the one who forms light and creates darkness, the one who brings about peace and creates calamity. I am the Lord who accomplishes all these things. O sky, rain down from above. Let the clouds send down showers of deliverance. Let the earth absorb it so salvation may grow and deliverance may sprout up along with it. I, the Lord, create it. One who argues with his creator is in grave danger, one who is like a mere shard among the other shards on the ground. The clay should not say to the potter, what in the world are you doing? Your work lacks skill. Danger awaits one who says to his father, what in the world are you fathering? And to his mother, what in the world are you bringing forth? This is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel, the one who formed him concerning things to come. How dare you question me about my children? How dare you tell me what to do with the work of my own hands? I made the earth. I created the people who live on it. It was me. My hand stretched out the sky. I give orders to all the heavenly lights. It is me. I stir him up and commission him. I will make all his ways level. He will rebuild my city. He will send my exiled people home but not for a price or a bribe, says the Lord who commands armies. This is what the Lord says, the prophet of Egypt and the revenue of Ethiopia, along with the Sabaeans, those tall men, will be brought to you and become yours. They will walk behind you, coming along in chains. They will bow down to you and pray to you. Truly God is with you. He has no peer. There is no other God. Yes, you are a God who keeps hidden, O God of Israel, deliverer. They will all be ashamed and embarrassed. Those who fashion idols will all be humiliated. Israel will be delivered once and for all by the Lord. You will never again be ashamed or humiliated. For this is what the Lord says. The one who created the sky, he is the true God. The one who formed the earth and made it, he established it. He did not create it without order. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord. I have no peer. I have not spoken in secret in some hidden place. I did not tell Jacob's descendants, seek me in vain. I am the Lord, the one who speaks honestly, who makes reliable announcements. Gather together and come. Approach together, you refugees from the nations. Those who carry wooden idols know nothing. Those who pray to a God that cannot deliver. Tell me, present the evidence. Let them consult with one another. Who predicted this in the past? Who announced it beforehand? Was it not I, the Lord? I have no peer. There is no God but me, a God who vindicates and delivers. There is none but me. Turn to me so you can be delivered, all you who live in the earth's remote regions, for I am God and I have no peer. I solemnly make this oath. What I say is true and reliable. Surely every knee will bow to me. Every tongue will solemnly affirm. They will say about me, yes, the Lord is a powerful deliverer. All who are angry at him will cower before him. All the descendants of Israel will be vindicated by the Lord and will boast in him.
God, I'm not sure where the disconnect is for us. We constantly question, criticize, I don't know, there's there's a ton of ways that we do it. Uh, things that you do in our lives, for us, with us, uh, even against us, uh, intentionally to protect us. And you say here, how dare you tell me what to do with the work of my own hands? I created you. Don't you get it? I love you. I want what is best for you. Do not tell me how to run this earth. And yet every day, God, I catch myself wanting something that isn't in your alignment. I catch myself desiring something that's not of your will. Uh, I catch myself kind of rolling my eyes at something that's happening because I'm like, that's obviously God. It's not what I want. How arrogant are we that we think that way? We, we don't even need to be here on earth. You you took the time and energy to intentionally create all of us. Each one of us unique. You came up with us. You not only fashioned us, but you fashioned our hearts and our thoughts and, and our walk that we would take in life. You fashioned the amazing world that we live in and the people that we would meet. You are the creator of all of this. How did we end up so arrogant that we think we get to run any part of it? That we get to be in control or faux control of any part of it? God, I don't have an answer. I'm actually truly confused by that because I do that almost on a daily basis. I know when I'm walking on the beach, you are the one that could stop the waves from coming in over my shoes. I know that if you wanted to right now, all the stars that are so clear when I stand out on my porch at night, you could make them all go out. I know right now you have the power to leave me here on earth or take me home to heaven. I know all of that. And yet, again, out of sheer arrogance and selfishness, I still have the audacity to think I know better for what is happening in my life. Or maybe, maybe it's a thing where I definitely know that you know better, but I'm still going to selfish, selfishly choose my sin over what you want for me. I'm literally going to throw it up in your face. Reminds me of some of the teenage kids I work with. <laughs> Just being belligerent about things. And here I am. I am not a teenager anymore. I definitely know better. I know all that you have given me. Well, that's not true. I know all of the things I'm aware of that you've given me. And those alone have been overwhelming to me. I know that you've actually given me way more than I will ever realize. God, I know that you are the creator of universes upon universes. I know you are also so in love with us that you intimately want to come and have a relationship with just each one of us, uniquely, individually, separately. I get that. But I also have this situation where I tend to act like a two-year-old who's just gaining her independence and just wants to be on her own and is going to be defiant about it and wants to get her own way. God, fill my heart with humility today. Not just obedience, although that's what I want to give you, but fill it with humility because once I'm in the right position on my knees in front of you, in sheer humbleness that is when you become who you should be which is lord over all lord over my life lord over my heart and i immediately am put back into balance again of who i am in this kingdom i am not the god of my own kingdom the illusion of god of my own kingdom but i am your child to love you and respect you and be in awe of you and all that you've done for me. God, help bring me back into alignment on my knees, into your will, and stop this defiance, this independence, this desire to have my own way. Stop me from questioning your amazing work that you have always done in the past and will always continue to do. Take me down quite a few pegs so that we're correctly in alignment with each other again. With you as my God and my creator. In your son's name I pray.
Amen.